Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, videos in scroll views. Um, specifically, I'm going to talk about on mobile and about UI performance. Uh, the golden standard is 60 frames per second. All your mobile phones ticks at 60 frames per second. And so that's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, five seconds about me. I'm Clement Gensmer. I'm a, a software engineering manager at Facebook. I've been working in videos for about five years and on scroll performance for two years before that. And as a hobby, I collect action cameras. I like to do uh, stupid things with them and especially uh, broking my stupid foot. And <laughs> um, let's move on. So um, why does it matter? Um, you're watching a video, you're full screen, you're having like an amazing time, you're watching The Wire, I don't know. Um, and, and this is great, right? Uh, like you don't really, nothing is really going on on the screen, you're just refreshing um, at 30 frames per second most of the time, so why would you care about the UI performance? Well, you would care because nobody consumes videos that way anymore. Um, it looks a lot more like that. So on the left, you have the stories model, if you will, like Facebook stories and Instagram stories and um, things like that, where you keep on swiping really quickly. Um, on the second model, you will have the like top to bottom, um, Facebook lasso and whatnot. And on the left, you have like the autoplay feed that you will have on Instagram or Facebook and whatnot. And so you will see like a lot of videos, a lot of video players that are circling really quickly. Okay, so things I'm not going to talk about today. I'm not going to talk specifically about playback performance, um, whether or not your video is stalling, whether or not your bit rates are high or low or not. Um, so it has nothing to do with like the frame rate of the video itself. Uh, and um, I'm also not going to talk about the standard UI optimization playbook. Um, before optimizing any UI, you should use the standard UI optimization playbook, which in five seconds is um, you should put instrumentation and um, set up your metrics that you want trying to optimize. Uh, you want to profile your apps, identify your bottlenecks. Um, you want to look at your usual suspects, which is layout and blending of layers and um, data processing. Anything that's essentially touched the UI thread or the render thread, you want to get that out. Um, and now I'm going to move on to sort of like the most advanced stuff, which is very specific to video players. Why is there, in the first place, like anything about video players? Well, because video players are the snowflakes of UI. <laughs> They're little specific things. They have their lone little special rules. You have like text and images, and everybody is happy about them. And then video players said, no, I have a decoder. I have things that matter. I'm really, really heavy. And if you play with me, you're going to crash. Um, the, the tragedy of these things is like, even like, we're like, I don't know, 10 years in the explosion of videos. If you try to profile like your video player um, on an iPhone or an Android, it's impossible, for instance, to track how many decoders you have. It's impossible to track uh, where your decompressed buffers are. Like that memory is not, everything is opaque and you're not gonna see anything. Um, so that's unfortunate. And um, that's why we have talks like these to sort of um, avoid bad things. OK, before we get into that, though, um, this is the interactive part of the talk. So I'm really excited about that. We'll see if it's going to work. Um, I'm going to quiz you. I'm going to quiz you uh, about some questions. All right, so first question is kind of easy. How m long it takes to, how, m how, much, how much time do you have in milliseconds to render a frame? 16 milliseconds. That's right, 16 milliseconds. It was on, on the slides before. You paid attention. I like that. OK, you have 16.3 milliseconds. In practice, you have a lot less than that. You have about eight to nine milliseconds, something like that. OK, harder. How long does it take to parse a dash manifest on an iPhone 7 Plus? Because that's the phone I had when I did my um, uh, benchmarks. <laughs> um, and I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, Clement, it depends on the size of the dash manifest. Yes, I know it depends on the size of the dash manifest. <laughs> but, but give me like an order of magnitude. 20 milliseconds. Um, on the heart, like that's a huge manifest. <laughs> um, <laughs> usually, it's a lot, lot faster than that. If you have like a video that doesn't have too many lines and not too many representations, um, it's relatively so if you think about it. Uh, but like Dash is sort of like XML format, and XML is not known to uh, a speed of parsing. Okay, parsing an MP4 item. I know it depends on the size of the MP4. Nanoseconds? No, it's a little bit slower than that. All right. Um, it's definitely faster. Uh, parsing an atom uh, and, and uh, like uh, MP4 atom are incredibly well encoded and incredibly efficient, so you can parse that really quickly. You're still, I'm still on the mobile phone for what it's worth. Okay, a little bit harder. Um, decoding 30 frames, 720p, H.264 hardware decoder. Again, I'm still iPhone 7 Plus. Harder, 
um, decode 30 frames, 720p, VP9 software decoding. <laughs> <laughs> it is slower, but it's not that slower. Um, so it's about twice as slow as your harder decoders. Um, and like these are orders of magnitude, I'm sure, depending on the complexity of your codec or the complexity of your encoding, it's going to change. But it's to give you an idea of like if you were to do any of that stuff on the UI thread, you drop frames and you go. All right. So now we're going to go into um, the strategies. Awesome. So I'm a mobile guy, so I'm going to talk. I'm going to start with iOS, and then I'll talk about Android. Okay. So strategies on iOS. The first thing you're going to hear me talk is uh, a lot of the UI thread or the render thread. Um, if you're not, uh, so it's UI thread on iOS and um, it's main thread on iOS and UI thread on Android. My apologies. Um, if you're not a mobile developer, I'm just five seconds. There's one thread on mobile OS that's essentially guide the rendering and the touch interactions, and it's called the main thread. And you really don't want to like block the main thread. If you block no more than one, nine milliseconds, you're going to drop a frame. Now, if you drop a frame while the view is scrolling and moving around, you're probably not going to see it. But if your finger, if you're in tracking mode and your finger is on the screen, you're definitely going to feel it. Like it's, it's going to feel bad. If you drop like three or four frames, it's definitely going to stutter, and that's a terrible experience. And if you lock the main thread for about like nine seconds, the OS is just going to kill your app. So you want to avoid that. Don't lock the main thread. OK, so the first thing, uh, first little uh, tidbit of strategy. Be really careful when you dialog AV player. Now, AV player is closed source. Like, that's, um, that's no way around that. Um, and so I'm not sure that this thing is still going to work, and I'm not sure why it works. But it works. You want to be careful when you deallocate things. Specifically, what you want to do, you want to deallocate the asset, then you want to wait. You want to deallocate the layer, then you want to wait. And then you want to deallocate the player in that order. The fun part when I discovered this trick is like I found it in two different places with two different, different amounts of waiting. So um, some people recommend 200 milliseconds, some people recommend one second. But this thing pretty much stands uh, on its own. So be careful. The second trick is around accessing properties on AV player item or AV player asset. Basically, don't do that. Um, what's happening, uh, specifically, don't do that on the, um, on the main thread. What's happening there is you're doing an RPC call towards Media Service D. Uh, Media Service D is the process on iOS who powers uh, playback. And um, that RPC call can be slow. Why is it slow? Is it because it's locking against other calls? Is it because it's actually parsing the HLS playlist or the Atom in order to find out the height of the video? I don't know. But I can tell you, that call is slow. Don't do that. Um, third strategy is going like a little bit um, a step above. Um, there's other ways to uh, display a video on iOS. And you can hit the decoders directly. Um, so you're going to have a VT decompression session that's going to get you a CV pixel buffer. And now you have to display this CV pixel buffer on the screen. You have typically, nowadays, two ways to do this. You can try via the OpenGL Metal way, or you can try the iOS Surface way. I'm going to talk about the first one uh, first. So uh, Open, uh, yeah, OpenGL way or Metal way, you're going to use an Eagle layer or a Metal layer. Um, and specifically, the reason you want to do that is because you want to want to convert your um, CV pixel buffer from, uh, R, uh, from YUV to RGB in order to display on screen. And so you have to do a little bit of shader programming in order to enable that. That's not that hard, but it's not that easy either. There was a lot of boilerplate. Um, another thing that's a little tricky about this, um, this strategy in general is that these layers that support essentially these frameworks are not super well adapted to scroll views either. So their recycling is complicated. They're their life cycle is not that simple. Um, they're typically going to have a global context that wants to manage all the layers, and so you have to deal with that as well. Um, so it does work, but it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, the iOS surface, uh, iOS surface way is a lot simpler. The way you do it is like you configure your decoder to output the CV pixel buffer on an iOS surface, and then you just extract the iOS surface from the CV pixel buffer and plug it onto a CL layer. And that works great. No boilerplate, super easy to do. On both of these strategies, though, you kind of have to decide whether or not your rendering loop is on the main thread or not on the main thread. So as you heard by now, you don't want to block the main thread. So you probably don't want to do this on the main thread. But there are some massive disadvantages to not do it on the main thread, specifically because at some point, you may want to animate, like you want to go full screen. So you have to rotate. And so you're going to have essentially the main thread um, driving animation who's going to fight with the the fresh, uh, the screen refresh, and that's going to cause some problems. So 
you kind of have to deal with that in either way. Um, but those strategies allows you to control the rendering a little bit better and typically to go a lot faster. Android. OK, so Android is a whole different story. Um, the first thing on Android that you want to have to deal with when you have multiple videos in the same uh, views is old versions of Android. And old versions of Android, specifically the Media Codec API, which is at the center of ExoPlayer, is going to crash. Um, 4.4 and 5.1 are especially crashy uh, when you have multiple codecs. And so typically, the way to go around this is to shove your codecs on um, your codec manipulation on a different process, in that case, the video process. Um, and you have your RPC calls from one, uh, one way to the other, and that works fine. Of course, don't do your RPC call from process to another from the, uh, from the render thread. That would be terrible. But if you don't do that, you're sort of in a um, safe spot. The other thing you want to take, uh, you have to be really, really careful on Android is the life cycle of your surfaces. So surfaces are really heavy on Android. They're objects that carry a lot of memory. For the same reason, I don't know exactly how much, because there's no tracing of it, and you can't have instrumentation around it. But essentially, you want to be really careful, and you don't want to deallocate them too quickly. Um, the standard scroll view on Android is called Recycle View. And when the, when the video player goes out of the Recycle View, um, Detach from Window is going to be invoked on your um, Texture View. And the problem of the texture, when that happens is that the texture view is going to trash the surface, and that's going to trash your player, and that's going to be really, really slow. Um, there's two ways, typically, to prevent that from happening. Uh, the first, you can sort of override the recycle view and prevent the detach from window from happening. That works OK. Um, but you have to deal with all kinds of other problems from, um, from essentially lying to recycle view. The other approach that's a little bit cleaner is letting the recycle, the recycle view detach from window your texture view, and then it's going to give it back your surface. You keep that surface around, and then you reuse it next time you allocate the texture view. Um, and that works uh, a, lot, a lot cleaner, and it's a lot faster. You heard me talking a lot about texture view. There's indeed two ways to render a video on Android. There's one way that's called texture view, and a way that's called surface view. When you put them into a recycle view on the old version of Android, not that old, like Lollipop and below, Specifically, if you put a surface view, you're going to have a nasty black bar at the bottom uh, when you scroll around. The reason is because, essentially, the, the rendering of the video itself is delayed compared to the rendering of your recycle view. And so you scroll around, you're going to have this black bar. And nobody likes black bars. So um, it, you, you kind of have forced to use texture views on all versions of Android. The problem of texture views is that they're notoriously not as efficient as the surface view. And so you'd prefer to use surface view, but you can. Um, this bug has been fixed on uh, you know, better versions of Android. The, um, the issue there is like even, even on the better versions, the texture view actually tends to be a little bit faster. Um, the way around that typically is that uh, whenever you go full screen or when you go in a mode where you're not going to move around, then you can switch to your surface view and uh, rips out the benefits from this. Sweet. Um, Another strategy that's pretty cool that was introduced about a year ago is codec reuse. Uh, so historically, um, ExoPlayer didn't support it. So essentially, when you uh, create a codec with a specific configuration, you couldn't reuse it for a different video, even if the codec was compatible. Um, that was fixed. Unfortunately, that strategy is still somehow difficult to use and not necessarily um, going to improve your perf. So test it out. It's kind of cool, and it potentially can improve um, your perf. Now I'm going to talk about strategies that works on both. Um, Android and iOS. Sweet. So um, the messing up with thread priority. Uh, messing up with thread priority can work. So you've talked a lot about the UI thread, and uh, hear me talk a lot about the UI thread. So you're like, how about just making the UI thread the highest priority in the world? Well, that can work. And on some places, um, it's going to work. The issue here is m more often than not, at this point, you're essentially hitting the limit about um, how of, of your cognition. Like, you, there's no human that can possibly see the difference between those two, right? Which is very common, like when you improve perf, at some point, you need instrumentation to do that. The problem here is, like, usually you're going to have an, instrument, an instrumentation thread, which is the thread that is essentially going to control and measure how fast you are. And that thread is not independent from you messing around with the thread priority. So you may want to do that, essentially, to the point where you can actually see the difference. If you see the difference, you, may, you, you might be just messing around with your measurements, and you're not changing anything. So I would stay away from that. In some cases, it can work. Sweet. Another strategy that was like 
very, very surprised by is uh, changing your ABR policies. Uh, now, you would think that um, roughly the size of your video is really going to have no impact on the speed of um, on your scroll view because it's really, really far away. Like, you're in the network, and so like whether the decoder is decoding 360p or 720p, that's not going to matter. It is going to matter. It is going to matter on specifically low-end Android devices. Um, if you have one core, it definitely matters. But even if you have like you multiple cores, um, the pressure of decoding a video can be uh, hard enough to slow down your, your UI. Um, so you may want to test that out. Um, so finally, uh, quick summary. Um, always start with the standard UI optimization playbook. On iOS, be careful to the deallocations. Um, don't touch the AV player item, AV player asset. And if, uh, if you're feeling courageous, um, hit the decoder directly and use iOS Surface. On Android, you always want to pay attention to the old version of Android and try to uh, run on a separate process to avoid these crashes. Uh, reuse the Surface, reuse the Critic, reuse just about anything you can on Android. And uh, finally, compare Surface View and Texture View. Um, surface View tends to be faster, but Surface View will have a better uh, battery life. And in both cases, um, you can play with the scheduler and, and your ABR policies, and you might get uh, better perf. And that was it for me. Uh, yeah, it's not that stable. <laughs> so essentially, um, sometimes the OS is going to tell you, yeah, yeah you're, you're good to go. You can reuse the codec, and that might not be true. And then your codec goes to trash, and then you have to reallocate it again. Um, and yeah, that's, that's essentially, you have to be a little careful about these things. It might not work. Now, the irony, honestly, is for the most part, no, I haven't seen that. What I've seen is usually when you have live stream, the UI gets fancier. Um, <laughs> you're going to have specifically, like, you would be amazed about, like, most live videos will have a live button that, that, that goes back and forth, right? And so you need an animation for that. And the implementation of that has to be really, really carefully done because every single operating system will do differently, and it's very, very easy to get wrong. So um, be careful about your UI components there. Facebook is, uh, I, I'm going to talk from the Facebook perspective, um, which is not fair, I know, because we have a lot of users. Um, so we have alpha mode and beta mode. Um, so alpha users is like, like has a few million users, and that's typically good enough in order to get a sense. Yeah, you have to go really far. Um, I don't think any lab testing is going to be good enough in order to catch these things. Um, you need real people with, um, with real uh, experience. One, one tiny thing that's sort of um, interesting about that, um, scroll performance is incredibly sensitive to the population that you're testing it on. And so um, specifically, for instance, every single time you have a new OS version that goes up, you you tend to see that your score performance goes down for the new version. And no, it doesn't. It's purely, essentially, um, um, selection bias. It looks bad just because the people who update their, their app faster scroll faster. And, and that they will have uh, worse performance. So, <laughs> um, so be very, very careful about comparing things. And yes, specifically on Android, you need a very large population in order to make conclusions. I don't know, 10,000 devices? A thousand, OK. Yeah. 10,000, yeah. Before that, I don't think you can say anything. Oh, should lab test, like a manual test on 10,000 devices? Yeah. OK. So no, okay. Like, honestly, like, <laughs> I would, I would like, again, I don't, think, I don't think, like my argument is like, no matter what amount of lab test is not going to work, you need to send it to 10,000 people. And like, at that scale of people, you will have a good enough representation whether or not change is correct. And after that, you can try a million and so on. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you very Thank much. You. That was amazing.